Good morning, everyone. So glad to be able to be with you again on this Wednesday morning <clears throat> as we go about our daily devotions of the Gospel of Luke. And so uh, it's another beautiful day outside, and we've got a lot of rain uh, in our area, haven't we? But uh, that's helping to um, replenish uh, uh, the ponds and being able to help out our farmers. And also, I know my flowers are looking uh, brighter than ever with all that extra water they're getting. But anyway, so glad you're here today. So glad to do devotions with you. I uh, wanted to give a couple announcements here this morning. The first one is um, just wanted to share again with our church family that we're looking at starting church again on June 28th, that Sunday morning. And uh, later this afternoon, uh, you'll receive an email from the church, kind of even um, a breakdown of how we're looking to kind of restart church again. And then also look for uh, a video that's going to be on our church's uh, YouTube page. If you go to uh, Google YouTube, you go to YouTube, uh, and YouTube, if you search Springfield UMC, then that will bring up our page. You'll find our You Are Loved page there. And so we're going to have some uh, announcements uh, regarding um, how we go about restarting church. Also, we're going to try to um, send it out uh, in an email, either that same one with um, kind of uh, the letter I'm going to send out today, or a second one, a link to take you to that YouTube page. So again, I'm not all into technology. I'm trying to be the best I can. Uh, but I want to let you know that uh, we're going to have some announcements later today related to what our worship services are going to look like um, starting again on June 28th. So excited that we're getting closer to being able to meet again in person. Um, so to miss that personal contact that we have with one another as we're worshiping God. Um, but y'all, it's going to be good. And I appreciate the prayers and the patience um, that have been lifted up and shared uh, with our church family and our conference as we try to work through all of this together. Um, today, we're in Luke chapter 18. So kind of the second announcement I want to share is that for our daily devotionals, we're going to do daily devotionals up to Friday, June the 26th. That will lead us into that Friday before our weekend of uh, restarting worship services in person here on our campus. And so we're going to uh, do that. And then once we reach that 26th, then um, we're going to look to um, stop our daily devotionals. It's been really good, and so enjoy that time together. But as we transition to more in-person ministry, uh, we won't have uh, the uh, everyday of, of in first or the devotional. So what we are going to do, um, something that God was putting my heart throughout this whole process, is that on Wednesdays, and probably on Wednesday evening around 6 o'clock, something like that, and I'll, I'll give better details when we get close to it, but on Wednesdays, once we uh, restart um, our church services again, I'll do a Facebook Live. We'll do more kind of a weekly, you know, devotional, weekly Bible stuff. It'll be very much like what we do here. Instead of being uh, every day or week, it'll be on Wednesdays. And we'll go through God's Word together. So for our church family, for those maybe who aren't uh, uh, ready yet to come back um, to church in person, for friends who've been watching from uh, other places around the state, there'll still be a way to connect together. And again, as we get closer to um, all these things, I'll give better detail for it. Just want to kind of share that little uh, insight. Look for an email to the church, a video kind of explaining about how we're restarting church here on June 28th. And then also we're going to do daily devotionals through um, uh, June 26th. And after that, we'll go just once a week on Wednesdays and have that time to share together. Anyway, that's a lot of information here at the beginning, but we just wanted to kind of give um, some clarity to what's going on. Um, and so as we move towards our daily devotionals from here through that Friday of uh, June 26, uh, and we're in the Gospel of Luke, I'm going to do something a little different where I'm going to start expanding a little bit more our teaching on certain chapters. Usually it's been like a chapter right, just picking a point. So uh, now until the 26th, uh, some chapters, like Luke chapter 18, we're actually going to spend the next three days on Luke chapter 18. We look at the different moments of Jesus' teaching, his interaction with different people, the miracles that he did. And so um, as we um, go, we're going to go through Luke, Luke we're just going to break it down a little bit more 
uh, until we get to June uh, 26. So anyway, that's a lot of um, information this morning, um, but glad to be able to have this time with you. Would you join me? Let's just take a moment. Lord, just breathe in your presence today. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for how you love us. We thank you for how you lead us. We thank you for how you care for us. There's no one else like you, Lord. No one else like you, Lord. And so we thank you for this morning. We pray the blessings of Jesus upon your word, upon your people. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us today. I pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 18. We're going to start off here with the parable of the persistent widow. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Right there, off the bat, Luke's giving us some insight about this teaching of Jesus. He's like every teaching, every parable, every story has at least one, if not many, significant spiritual truths that we're supposed to receive and learn from, right? And so here, as he's about ready to share about this parable of Jesus on the persistent widow, he lets us know right from the beginning that Jesus told his disciples a story, a parable, to show that we should always pray and never give up. Why don't you say that with me? Always pray and never give up. Now, let me ask a question to us today. Does that describe our prayer life? Does that describe our prayer relationship with Jesus? If I'm going to be honest here this morning, I can confess and say sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't, right? There are some times that I'm absolutely always praying, trusting God, going after these promises of the Lord and the Scriptures, going after God's fulfillment of His life related to things happening in our family, our church, our nation, and our world. You know, persevering in that prayer. But then, there are times when I pray about something, and then I might not pick it up again for another few days, maybe a week. Right? Not that I don't care about it, but I'm not going into it. I want to tell you something. If there's anything that I've been learning about this season we've been in the last several months, if there's anything I've been learning about reading books about revival throughout church history, is that what we're about to hear in this parable about always praying and never give up, that is an absolutely critical part of our Christian life and our relationship with God. And it's an absolutely essential part of praying and crying out to God for revival to come. And our lives and our churches and our communities and our nations and in our world. Every revival movement of God Every great awakening that's ever taken place is based off of people who are always praying and never giving up until they saw the Lord move, until they received the outpouring of God in their community for lives to be changed. And so I just want to encourage us today that if there's one thing that we take from anything here today, we haven't even gotten into the story yet, right? But if there's anything we need to take to be an important part of how we live our lives in relationship with Jesus Christ, we need to be a people who always pray and never give up. That we will continue to go in the heart of God. We will go in this relationship of love with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That we will continue to press into the promises of our glorious God until He pours out the promise that He said that He would bring. The blessing that He said He would give. The answers that He would bring forth for the glory of His name. Right? And we're trusting that, that when we pray, when we talk to God, when we listen to Him, when we relate to Him uh, as friend to friend, that He cares about everything that we pray about, right? But not only that does He care, but that He answers. And that we can trust that the way God answers is the greatest expression of His life, of His love, of His holy divine will to be done related in that moment. That doesn't mean we're always going to understand the answers of God. I know that I haven't. But I come back to the character of God. And I know that God is good. I know that God is holy.
holy, and that God is loving, right? And so when we pray and we press into the promises of God, when we pray and crying out our heart, Lord, come, shake our nation, Lord, shake our world. Fill us with the living spirit of God. Lord, come and intervene in these moments of life. When we are always praying and never giving up, we are saying that, God, we know that you hear. We know that you are at work. We know that you will answer. We know that you will answer according to your divine will, which is your good to be poured out into our lives in these situations that God will answer. And so when we pray, we need to be people who always pray and never Give up. Say that with me again. Always pray and never give up. I want to encourage you this morning to, to just write down and make a list of things that you want to cry out to God for. I want us to, to maybe make a list of the list of the Lord. Well, what is that you're wanting us to cry out for, God, and never give up until we see your answer come, right? You know, you, you think back to the very beginning of Luke in the study, right? Remember Simeon? Remember how he had this relationship with God and he loved the Lord and he sought the Lord in his life and, 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 and he, was, he longed to see the promised fulfillment of God's Messiah come, right? And, and, and the Lord honored uh, Simeon's devotion to him, right? And that he got to see he got the hold in his arms the promise of God in Jesus Christ, right? And he didn't see how the promise was going to be fulfilled, but he saw the promise there and knew that it would be fulfilled. And, and, and he held on to that because God had told him, before you die, you're going to see my promise come, right? See, we need to be a people that are always pressing in into this relationship with our gracious God. We never give up. We never give up until we receive all that God has promised to bring. So how does he illustrate that? He says, there was a judge in a certain city who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came in repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy." The judge ignored her for a while, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see if she gets the justice because she's wearing me out from their constant request. All right, here's the story Jesus gives. In fact, here's a judge who doesn't really care about the people and he doesn't fear God at all. Right? But there's this woman who's coming to him and she needs to have justice related to to some case, some cause related to her life. And every day, you can imagine her being in the court system, and she's just constantly saying, Judge, give me justice. Judge, give me what's right in this moment. Judge, move in this situation. And she just persistently calling him out, saying, Give me justice. Give me righteousness in this moment. Do what is right in this place. And the judge is kind of like, I don't care about God, I don't care about this people, but this woman is driving me crazy. She's driving me nuts with her persistent request. And so I'm going to give her what she wants, right? Now, look at what Jesus says, verse 6. Then the Lord said this, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? And the whole point of the story is that Jesus shares the story of someone who doesn't care about God or about people, but yet, because of that persistent, because of that consistent crying out for justice from this widow, the judge gives her what she desires, what she wants, right? Which is that justice, that righteousness. And so then Jesus puts her hands and says, listen, if this unjust judge will give what is right to this widow, 
how much more will your Father in heaven who loves you and cares for you and knows what his righteousness is for you, what is right and good and just for you, how much more does he desire to give you what is of his righteousness to those who will persistently, who will consistently, who will constantly call out his name, who will call out in love, in faith, in devotion, in persistence, that the goodness of God will be received in those who cry out to receive the goodness of God in their lives. Amen? He's like, how much more does the Father want to bring about that kind of justice? But to those who will call out his name. And then, man, how about that last line? But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? How many will you find that are devoted to him? How many we will find who are persistently living this life, glorifying his name, seeking his heart, doing his will? What's it say about us today? Today's a good day to kind of check ourselves. Where am I at in my relationship with God? Not am I saved? Yes. If you're a, a, a Christian, if you surrender your life to Jesus, you're saved like I am, right? But where are we in our passion, in our pursuit, in our persistence to draw near to the Father's heart and to pray for the life and the will of God to be released here on earth as it is in heaven? Where are we today? If Jesus was to come back today, where would he find our faith level? Where would he find our faith devotion? Where would he find us in relationship to himself? All right, let's continue going here. Verse 9. Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank God. That I am not like other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I certainly am not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner. Not the Pharisee who turned him justified just before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. How do we live our lives, y'all? Do we live ourselves as entitled Christian people? Or do we live ourselves as those who know that we are sinners, saved by the grace of God? But in that grace of God, given new life to live in the righteousness of Jesus. That our lives are not our own, but they belong to the Lord, right? It's important that we don't live an entitled life. That we don't exalt ourselves with other people. That we don't think that we're better than someone else. When we recognize that we're all sinners, and it's only through the grace and the mercy of God that we've even been saved. And that's always humble us to think about how great was the sacrifice of Jesus for you and for me. That even while we were despicable sinners, Christ died for us. And that anything good about you and anything good about me has nothing to do with your goodness or my goodness. It has everything to do with the goodness of God alive in us through God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Y'all with me here this morning? Humility keeps us on our knees. It keeps us on our faces below the Lord. Acknowledging that He is the one who's holy. He is the one who's worthy of praise. He's the one who's good. He's the one who's rescued us. He's the one that always loves us. He's the one that makes us into someone brand new. That he's the one that is the giver of every good and perfect gift. That he's the one 
that enables us to live a righteous life, that he's the one that enables us to love as Christ loves us. He's the one that enables us to do life as Jesus did life. And it's a humility and a life that just seeks to honor Jesus in everything that one day will be exalted. We don't humble ourselves to be exalted. We humble ourselves because we know of the great price paid to redeem our lives. And we live our lives in humility because we realize that we're not the main character. Jesus is. I think that's such a huge thing today. That we ask this question. Who's the main character of your story? Of my story? The tendency in our humanness is to make us the main character. And that's just a tragic story, isn't it? But when Jesus is the main character of our life story, then it's all about how he's honored and how he's glorified. I think about John the Baptist again, right? John the Baptist says, I've got to become less so that he can become more. That Jesus is the one that's all about. Y'all, I just want to encourage today to remember, Jesus is the great king. And it's all about him. And then we live our lives in the humility of that mercy and grace that saved us, that now leads us in humility, that desires with everything inside of us. To honor and glorify and magnify Jesus, who is worthy of all praise. Would you pray with me today? Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your holy scriptures. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for the way that you speak to us through them. Lord, continue to lead us to be those who know that you are life, and life is all about you. Thank you, Lord, also for reminding us to be a people who persistently pray and seek the heart of God. We ask your blessings to never give up in doing so. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My friends, have a wonderful Wednesday. Again, tomorrow we're going to be back in Luke chapter uh, 18. And I look forward to being able to share God's word with you. We love you. Have a wonderful Wednesday.